Hello, I'm Jun Yamakino, a Japanese violin player. I've been actively playing modern music and contemporary music in Europe and Japan. I would like to share you the history of 20th century music. This is going to be a series and today, I focus on the decade from 1930 to 1940. So let's take a look at the 10 years from 1930. This happened between 1930 and 1940. You can see that various things are happening at a dizzying pace. Everything was the preparation of World War II, which began in 1939, firstly. Let's take a look at Nazi Germany, led by Hitler. Germany a defeated country in World War I was charged a large amount of compensation and the German people were forced to live, live a difficult life with a large amount of debt. In addition, the Great Depression struck in 1929 made the German people even more financially distressed. Everyone has the idea that I don't like such a difficult life anymore or I want to regain strong Germany and somehow improve our lives. The people wanted strong leadership and charisma to improve Germany. That's where Hitler came in. When the Hitler cabinet was inaugurated in 1933, Hitler carried out various policies such as the revival of the country and the exclusion of Jews with the principle of national fast. The Nazis also cracked down on degenerated art as a culture policy. Degenerate art is a view of art. The Nazis set out to ban modern music and contemporary art and avant-garde art as that. It is morally and racial corrupt and is harmful to domestic society and ethnic sentiment. In the field of music, it is called degenerate music, pieces influenced by alternate music and jazz, or works written by Jewish composers of any style have been banned, excluded. Following the degenerate art exhibition held in Munich in 1937, the following year, in 1938, the degenerate music exhibition was held in Düsseldorf as the exhibition. The Nazis focused musicians were labeled as a degenerate art, saying the music they make is dangerous and not good, so we ban it. The exhibition then traveled around each city. So, who has been accused there? The exhibition was divided into seven sections. Section 1 The Influence of Judaism. 2. Arnold Schoenberg 3. Kurt Weil and Ernst Krenek 4. Minor Bolsheviks like Franz Schrecker, Alban Berg, and Ernst Toch, etc. 5. Leo Kestenberg, director of musical education before 1933. 6. Hindemith Operas and Oratorios 7. Igor Stravinsky It was that. Due to such strict crackdowns, the musicians who have created so-called contemporary music are forced into exile. Jewish Schoenberg went into exile in the United States in 1934, and Stravinsky went into exile also in Switzerland, France and the United States in the early 1920s due to the fact that his native Russian empire had become a socialist state. In 1940, Hindemith, Bartok, and Jewish Darius Mio also went into exile to escape the policy. So lots of musicians with avant-garde ideas left Europe. On the contrary, 
Carl Amadeus Hartmann and some musicians like Boris Brahe were forced into exile in the country. Hartmann composed Concert Funebule for violin solist and string orchestra as a resistance to the Nazis in 1939. But, of course, his work was banned in Germany at the time, so the premiere of this piece was held in 1940 in Sankt Switzerland. The premiere in Germany took place in 1959, shortly after World War II. There were many examples of avant-garde works, such as works composed as resistance to the political system that were not initially performed and were later announced. Shostakovich, the master composer of the Soviet Union, was also a musician who suffered from such a political system throughout his life. In the Soviet Union, the policy was cracked down on Nazi Germany's degenerate art emerged in the form of socialist realism. Socialist realism has the meaning of the official expression method and critique of art, music, literature, etc. in the Soviet Union. In art, the statement said, make something with the purpose of prizing socialism and giving the people a sense of revolution. It must be not complicated but just simple. Something like that. The Soviet Union was thinking of using art to maintain the national system in order to establish the Stalin system. Soviet composers must have composed music useful to the socialist nation under the slogan that compose music that has a realistic depiction of working class entertainment that is socialist in content and nationalist in form. The point is, make a song that easy for anyone to hear without complicated things, be positive, and think that the Soviet Union is the best. Born in St. Petersburg in the Russian Empire in 96, Shostakovich absorbed classical music early on and began composing demonstrating his musical genius. Shostakovich released the opera Lady Macbeth of Mzensk district in 1934, which was influenced by contemporary European music and was a huge hit, especially among the masses. However, it aroused Stalin's antipathy because the opera was radical on the subject of infidelity and far from helping to form a socialist nation. Two days after Stalin watched the opera, Lady Macbeth of Muzensk district was criticized in the official Soviet newspaper Pravda under the title Absurd Instead of Music. The criticism was that the opera was complex, obsessed, and lacking socialist realism. A week later, the ballet The Bright Stream was also criticized under the title, The Ballet Hypocrisy. This had a quite big influence on Shostakovich's music activities, and after this criticism of Prada, most of his works were no longer performed. Shostakovich himself was shocked by this situation and cancelled the premiere of his avant-garde symphony No. 4. Shostakovich then regained his honor with Symphony No. 5, released in 1937. In this way, the 1930s was the time when Nazi Germany, which advocated nationalism and the Soviet Union, a socialist state, began to control and use music and art in order to solidify their own country and expand their power. Next, let's take a look at Japan and the United States, another place of development of contemporary music. In the 1930s, the Japanese composer world developed dramatically. I can mention the establishment of the Federation of Emerging Composers in 1930 and the establishment of a composition department at the Tokyo Academy of Music in 1932 as a symbolic event. With the establishment of the composition department at the Tokyo Academy of Music, more systematic composition education spread throughout the country. Also, with the establishment of Federation of Emerging Composers, 
it has become possible to publish works on a regular basis. In 1935, Japan joined the International Society for Contemporary Music and became able to actively exchange domestically and internationally. Japanese music in the 1930s was made with a relative large amount of nationalist music rather than the Western musical tendencies. It means that many works were created that matched the Japanese scale and the characteristics of Japanese. I think good examples are Akira Ifukube's Japanese Rhapsody, which is famous for composing Godzilla's music, and the theme and variation on folk song of Nam district composed by Yoritsune Matsudaira. In the United States, it was a time to recover from the economic crisis caused by the Great Depression in 1929. Meanwhile, John Cage, one of the most influential composers in the history of the 20th century, gradually begins his musical activities. Born in Los Angeles, California in 1912, Cage studied architecture in Paris in 1930, and then he returned to the United States in 1931. From then, he began to take music seriously and studied at the University of Southern California from 1934 to 1937 under Schoenberg, who had just been exiled from Europe. At first, Cage started to compose some works in 1933. The most of the pieces that the time seemed to inherit Schoenberg's music. But he has already stated many new ideas such as the potential of electric instruments, the emphasis on noise, and the experimental music center in his text The Future of Music Credo in 1937. In 1940, he created a prepared piano in which rubber pieces of wood, balls, etc. were sandwiched between the strings of the grand piano to change the tone into something like a percussion instrument and began to breathe new air into the music world. After that, in the first half of the 1940s, the world progressed with World War II but shortly after the end of the war, in 1945, the thirst for new music split mainly among the younger generation. The Darmstadt summer course on contemporary music became the stronghold of post-war avant-garde music while absorbing that <laughs> momentum. Next time, I would like to talk about the situation there and the new music that was born from it. That's all for this time, so I will summarize it. So first of all, Nazi Germany which advocated nationalism and the Soviet Union, a socialistic state, have begun to control and use music and art in order to solidify their own ground and expand their power. Nazi Germany announced a policy of controlling degenerate art and the Soviet Union announced a policy of promoting art in accordance with socialist realism, which accused various musicians. As a result, Schoenberg, Hindemis, Stravinsky and others went into exile in the United States and Shostakovich had to survive by composing compromise music to be accepted by the Soviet regime. In Japan, more contemporary music has been created and many works that match the Japanese scale and the characteristic of Japanese have been created. And in the United States, one of the most influential people in the history of music in the 20th century, John Cage, invented the prepared piano and began to breathe new life into the music world. That's it for this time. So next time I will talk about from 1940 to 1950. Thank you for listening and talk to you soon.